kick the butt once in a while. So uh, that's uh, okay. another thing you'll find in, uh, in this booklet is a, a paper titled Times Have Changed. It's a rundown on what the Doolittle team did when they went off to uh, bomb Japan. Uh, they even carried a bottle of booze with them and a phonograph record and all kind of crazy things. Uh, it's very interesting. And there's a paper in here from John Doolittle. He came and spent a week with me one time at Fort Bragg when I was a colonel. He said, I heard a lot about you and your leadership ability. And I wanted to come spend some time with you and see, see if we could work together. And uh, it was a great honor to, to be with him for a week. He told me that <clears throat> after the raid in uh, 1942 when they bombed Tokyo, one plane did get through. They did drop three bombs on Japan. Uh, they, the Navy launched them early and all kind of things went wrong. But they still got there. And he said uh, for the first couple of weeks after he got back to the States, he was a lieutenant colonel then, he didn't know whether he was going to get promoted or court-martialed. But uh, uh, what did he do? They worked around a while and gave him the Medal of Honor. They were looking for somebody to uh, give a big medal to in the war. So he get a Medal of Honor. What did I get? Screw it up to the one rescue. Nothing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the times have changed. That's the title of the thing. And then uh, it was a great pleasure to uh, work with uh, various people over time. And one of the people, my favorite people, was Senator John Stennis from Mississippi. And he was the leader of the Armed Services Committee. And my good friend, and he supported me with money and all kinds of things through the years. And then there's another paper in here entitled Human Relations. And this paper will tell you something that you probably don't know and maybe you thought about. Women have needs. Needs. They need a place to stay. They need uh, food on the table for the kids. They need a, a warm house. And men have wants. They want to be a hero. They want to be the man up, up front. They want to get a big citation and a big pat on the back. But there's a difference, see? Women have needs and men have wants. So keep that in mind as you uh, move along life. And then there's another citation in here, the final one. Abraham Lincoln's Dennis' <coughs> address. <coughs> People will tell you that that is the most poignant speech ever made by a politician. And I commend it to you. Read it. It's a very, very uh, wonderful words in there. And uh, he starts out with four score years and ten and all that good stuff. But Lincoln was an unusual man in my uh, collection and memory. We've had four great presidents, George Washington, of course, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and Ronald Reagan, in spite of the fact that uh, Oliver North and a few other people uh, uh, did some very uh, un unauthorized things and smeared his name and his reputation. But in any event, he was, a, he was a great leader, and you can't take that from him. He uh, uh, told the Russians to take down the wall. What did they do? They took down the wall. And uh, so uh, he got a lot of good things done for this country. So uh, those are my four choices. A lot of other people also ran. John F. Kennedy, <coughs> he was going to do all kinds of things. He had a list of a hundred things he's going to do. But by the time he got assassinated, he hadn't done any of them. Lyndon Johnson took over and he did them. And then Lyndon got us into that mess in Vietnam, and then he quit on us. Said if he was uh, nominated, he wouldn't run. And if he was elected, he wouldn't serve. So you call that uh, a Texas quitter. Now, one thing I want to advise you about, 
We don't need no more Texans in Washington. <laughs> We've uh, had uh, Lyndon Johnson and two Bushes, <coughs> and, and more recently, uh, the Secretary of Defense. So the last thing we need is another Texan in Washington. So uh, the guy that was running for president, uh, I told him that one day. I said, you ain't going nowhere. We ain't going to vote for you because we don't need any more damn Texans in Washington. <laughs> so uh, that's my belief. We have enough of them. So enough of that. I was asked tonight to talk about three different subjects. And the first one is uh, how I became an officer. And uh, the way I became an officer was I was drafted in the Army in May of 1945. I was going to the Citadel and I wanted to be a doctor. And uh, I was going to get to be a doctor and come back to Conway and practice and take over Dr. Proctor, who was my third cousin's practice. Uh, I, uh, by the time I got drafted, I'd already passed organic chemistry and anatomy, and those are the two subjects that usually send people to business school. <laughs> so I passed both of them, and I knew I could uh, get admitted to MUSC. But uh, during the fall of uh, 44, uh, it did, uh, they lost so many men in the Hurricane Forest and so forth, till the Army lowered the draft age from 18 and a half, where they